overall, my name is Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel video, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back together again. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about all 22 Sony Animation films because Vivo came out ye yesterday, and I finally get to rank all of them once again since we got Wish Dragon coming out this came out this year uh, back um, in June. Uh, so now I finally get to re-rank them. Um, but before we get started talking about all 22, there are a couple of them that I haven't seen. So I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm going to just go through all the ones I haven't seen. And then I'll tell you when the ranking is going to start. And then we'll talk about all the ones I have seen. Alright, so now it's time to start the ranking. Now for me, The Smurfs was just such an odd film. Because they literally kind of start off with the characters being in, in, their, in their home world. But they don't really explore it very well because they focus in on the Smurfs going to New York, being these human people. And they're trying to, you know, get away from Gargamel and all this stuff. And they have to make it really interesting. There are a couple of scenes that I do kind of enjoy. And there are some sweet moments with the Smurfs. But other than that, this is just kind of the worst of Sony Animation films. <laughs> kind of a mix back for me because I did kind of like the voice cast of it with Jeff Bridges in the mix but overall it just felt like cars except with penguins as this penguin had a very cool urge about um surfing on water and I just didn't think the plot line with it and then Jeff Bridges' character is basically like Doc Hudson from Cars so overall it just felt so similar to Cars that I couldn't I didn't really enjoy that much. And for me, this is actually kind of an, an enjoyable, another enjoyable film of the Hotel Transylvania franchise. As all the characters are getting out of the hotel and they're out and basically relaxing on this monster vacation cruise out in the ocean while they explore the ocean world. But then you also have the mixture of Van Helsing and his great great granddaughter and he finds this master plan of how to defeat the monsters. And it is kind of cool how they kind of defeated, but it's not the best film ever. But I do think it's another solid addition to the Hotel Transylvania series. Now, honestly, I would actually say that this is the probably the Hotel Transylvania film that I actually rewatched the most because it's just so enjoyable to go back to this world and all the funniness and enjoyability to it. And I actually watched it during school, so maybe that's probably the reason why, since when I, I watched it in elementary school and I was like, this is just pure enjoyment. But, uh, you know, I like the Dennis character in it. I like, uh, you know, the new element with like, uh, you know, Mavis is thinking about leaving since Hotel Transylvania is not the best place for a human kid to grow up in with a hotel full of monsters, but still some humans in it. Uh, so it kind of creates some cool um, stuff with that. Introducing uh, Al Brooks or something. Something with his last name is Brooks. Um, I thought that character was really nice, well done. 
Um, for, at first I thought he was played by Al Pacino for some reason. I don't know. The, their two voices sound the same for some reason. Uh, and overall, and it had to, a pretty good slang bang finale as you basically get all the monsters fighting the bad vampires, and it was just awesome. So I loved. I thought it was really enjoyable, but at the same time, it just kind of had some weak points to it. But I still thought it was another en sorry, another enjoyable and solid entry to the Hotel Transylvania series. Now, this is for me. This is actually a movie that I actually do enjoy. Um, I, I enjoyed the, the our two lead characters. I thought they were both very likable, and I thought it, the animation was pretty good. I mean, when the characters were moving and stuff, it didn't really look that good, but the whole, like, sights of everything, of, like, the trees and the forests and everything, it looked cool to me. But then also, like, the character, and then also, like, the, sl the big finale at the end, with all the animals going against the hunters, the action in it was kind of cool. Um, and then the soundtrack was also pretty good, and it had some pretty good emotions once you move into the end of it. But it does kind of get silly at times as these characters do silly things. They eat food, human food in human stores, and I just don't really like that stuff. But other than that, this is actually a pretty surprising film for me that they made from Sony as its, its first movie. Now for me, I thought that this film was enjoyable, like the first film, the way they kind of develops the story and as it actually kind of creates this new world of the uh, of Flint's machine as instead of food falling from the sky, you actually have animals, you actually have food becoming the animals in this whole jungle world. And I thought it was really cool the way they did that. And you know, I kind of like the theme that they did with Flint as he kind of, he, it's a, going back to that theme that people think he's a failure and people around him are trying to support him about it. Like that he's not a failure. And then it kind of, but the, the whole thing, just the villain isn't really that memorable. And the whole third act is kind of enjoyable, but then kind of weird at the same time. And it's just kind of weird. So overall, I enjoyed this movie, but it's definitely not the best sequel to the original Cl 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 Cloudy of the Chance Meatballs. <laughs> So for me, I know that people don't really like this movie because it basically copies Wreck-It Ralph. But if I'm being honest, they kind of do the story of Wreck-It Ralph and they kind of do it in a new and clever way. Now, obviously the story with the emoji character, he he doesn't want, he doesn't, he, I mean, it's not that he doesn't want to be the man emoji, he just can't be it. It's just hard for him to stay one emotion all the time. And... Uh, it creates a pretty good centric emotion with that as he wants to be mad forever and he basically messes up the phone on Alex's phone but then he's also trying to get this girl that he likes and honestly I think that there are some themes in there some of the characters in here are enjoyable with the uh, with the themes and emotions and stuff and the and I kind of this kind of relates to me with the human world stuff as the boy is trying to ask the girl out to this dance and uh it's kind of relatable with all that stuff uh the soundtrack is pretty cool the villain is awful um and also if there's another movie that kind of copies another movie which we'll talk about um as of right now but this is a good movie but it's definitely not as good as Wreck-It Ralph So like the Emoji Movie, where Emoji Movie kind of copied the whole story of Wreck-It Ralph, Wish Dragon kind of copies the whole story of, of Aladdin, except it does it in a new way, and it makes it like fun and stuff. Where in Aladdin, it was basically this whole Arabian desert place. In Wish Dragon, it's more China-ish, Asian place. And you have these two people that were best friends when they were kids, but they were separated because 
fam their families went separate because one of the families went sep their separate ways and went somewhere else. Uh, but then this kid, he wants to see his best friend again, but then he creates this relationship with this dragon as he basically every wish that he makes, he gets superpowers with like kung fu powers. Like Kimi the action is pretty awesome in the movie and it creates some cool relationships. Uh, and it really just does some pretty cool, nice things. Obviously, the villain is trash, and obviously, some of the the emotions in it aren't that great. But I think the way it kind of does the Aladdin storyline and makes it kind of a new way is pretty well done. So I like that about it. For me, I thought that this was a solid, enjoyable film about this, the daughter of Dracula wanting to go out in the world since she's like 118, which is basically like the teenage years, like the adulthood for vampires. But her, the father is scared because back then humans were technically terrible and wanted to kill vampires. And so he thinks that humans are all the same still. And, but at the same time, the core of it is that he doesn't know how humans are because humans have changed throughout history as you get the Johnny character where he basically doesn't really do anything harmful. He does he does think he's doing something harmful at the beginning, but then as he creates this relationship with him, it becomes kind of fun and funny and it's just enjoyable in the way the story goes. Dracula, Adam Sandler's character is a very interesting character as, as he starts to realize that humans aren't bad as they were before in the past. And so overall, it was just a really enjoyable film. The voice cast was Selena Gomez, Adam Sandler, Andy Sandberg, Kevin James. The whole voice cast was just fantastic. And so I just thought it was a nice, solid addition to the Sony Animation franchise. So the newest addition to Sony Animation filmography has been released now. And I really enjoyed this movie. I thought the, the characters were really interesting. The music was great. The animation was stunning. The relationships with all the different characters, the emotions were really nice, well done. Um, and I just thought that this was a very good film. The voice cast was also amazing. I do wish there were some characters that, and voice actors that could have been more in the movie. But besides that, this is just a very enjoyable film. And probably a movie I kind of want to see again. So for me, the plot line about, about this guy that wants to create this machine that turns food, that turns water into food, as it basically has rain, fall, food falling from the sky instead of rain or hail or snow. It's just such a clever plot line and it made it work so well with great animation, some great music, a great soundtrack, great characters, and just a great overall world that we get to explore. And the way that we actually get to see the relationship between Flint and his dad, as his dad does not think that he's doing this very well, it just creates a film that is lighthearted, it has some great emotions, it has some great relationships with all the characters, and it's overall just funny, and the idea of it is just great. So overall, I thought this was one of Sony Animation's film's best. So this was a film that I was mo really ex um, anticipating for when I first saw it back in March, and I truly loved it. It was just a very good film. It kind of took the um, it took a storyline of like um, rap la landing in rap or something. It was like a Disney short that came out back in 2013, and it took that plot line and made it into a film. And I thought that they did it really well. And kind of made it like this in like this spy thriller film that I kind of liked. I mean, it's not like a spy movie, but like it uh, the way they actually made pre um giving putting presents under the tree was actually kind of clever, and I really liked that. So uh, and the animation was just amazing. The th themes about Christmas was were amazing, especially with James McAvoy's character. All the other characters were pretty interesting. We actually got to see all these different parts of Christmas in different worlds that we never really had to see before. Were actually pretty cool. 
So overall, I just thought it was just one of Sony Animation's best films. Now let me just say this, the second, the first two, the three and second movies I just talked about before, Cloud of the Chance Meatballs and Arthur Christmas, both of those movies, I gave B pluses to because they're just really good. But Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is technically the only movie on this list that I would give an A or higher on this list. Because this probably no exception to what's the best on this list, and that is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Because once again, the because first off, the animation is just fantastic. The characters are all explained in very cool ways. It's absolutely hilarious the, all the characters just like i said they're all great they all have their specific character arcs with everything that they're doing the soundtrack and music is fantastic the character of miles morales is also really good as they when you start out the film it seems like they're gonna do that on um, the spider-man origin story again but they do it in a new way where it's not technically a miles morales origin story but it it's also a spider-verse storyline and i really love that Along the way, you also get the villains, where and one of the things about Spider-Man movies is that they put too many villains in the movie, and they just do not work. But this is the film where it starts to, to, to work. With Kingpin, I thought he was the best villain, though I don't like his look. The Prowler, fantastic villain. I absolutely loved him. The It reminded me a lot like the action sequences in like Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and Black Widow with Taskmaster. Uh as Winter Soldier and Taskmaster would like enter a room or something, then the scary, the thriller music would play. It was just amazing. And even characters like Scorpion, Tombstone, those characters, even though they don't get that much screen time, they're still good in the roles. And like the girl right here, Dr. Octopus, even she's still good too. So I think that this film balances everything that it's trying to do while having a few flaws with like, Kingpin's look and the way he looks like he looks like a literally a head sticking out of a black out of a black like screen and then some of the characters like Spider-Ham, Spider-Man Noir, and Penny Parker those characters were interesting but I just feel like they don't have any specific arc besides them just being funny and charismatic because they're played by very good act voice actors but besides that this is just a fantastic film and it's actually my fifth favorite movie of all time I know that doesn't say that on Letterboxd, but it is known to be that. But so that's my ranking of all 22 Sony Animation films. I know that's not the perfect ranking, but that just how it is. I can't rank all of them on Letterboxd. It would not make sense of why they're not higher. So that's my ranking. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My Instagram is Marvel6 and my TikTok name is Fan. If you guys don't understand those names, head to my bad section so you can follow me on all social medias. I'm also on Letterboxd. It's the same as Instagram, Marvel underscore, six underscore, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.